Hi folks, I didn't really intend to make another video on this NAD C372. Uh, my plan was just bring it in the house, hook it up, play some music through it, wait for it to inevitably blow up, and um, just maybe make some snarky comment on the previous video's uh, subject line, you know, something like time of death or what have you. So I brought it in and I hooked it up to these speakers. Um, these are ESS AMT-1As, they're 4 ohm speakers, and I played it loud. Now, the first time I fixed this amplifier, I, I always bring them in the house and play it for a while to make sure nothing happens, and it lasted 20 minutes at moderate volume. So I figured I'll crank it up, yeah, probably 10 minutes, smoke will come out, I'll make the notation, move on with my life. But a funny thing happened. It hasn't failed it. It hasn't failed. It's been on, powered up for three days since I finished that last video and I played it between five and eight hours a day loud in the forum speakers with not a single hiccup and it's on right now. I really didn't expect that. Now the only thing I did different which you may recall is I changed out all these small value electrolytic capacitors. NADs are known for these failing and indeed the ones that were near sources of heat like uh, voltage regulators and output stages were all just gone and I have never had bad electrolytics cause any other kind of damage unless they were shorted none of these were I checked every one just to see how bad they were none of them were shorted now if they're shorted yeah they'll take out other components but generally speaking bad capacitors um, you just change them out and everything's back to like it was no harm no foul so I was really flummoxed that that fixed it and we're going to talk about that in a little bit but I want to bring up something that I have learned over the years like a lot of things I learned this the hard way and that is this if you see something or you know something is wrong even if you don't think it has anything to do with your problem fix it because guess what they may have everything to do with your problem I can't tell you how many times back when I first started out I was working on um, CRT based televisions they were easy to find on the side of the road and there was a brick and mortar store near my house that rented out Sam's photo fact so th it was a great learning experience but every once in a while after I had gotten a few of them under my belt I'd open one up and go oh that's bad but I don't think that's causing my problem I'll come back and fix that only an hour later to trace around through the schematic to get right back to there and go oh not only is that a problem, it is the problem. And I could have saved myself an hour or, or, or two or however many if I had just changed it out because I knew it was bad. I was going to have to change it out anyway. So that's why I replaced the caps in that NED because I said, you know, they're going to have to be changed. I know they're bad. I can't see how they're causing my problem. But apparently they were. And first time I've ever seen that. Now, one reason could be is because this NAD utilizes a circuit they call ISC, which is impedance, oh, what is that? <sighs> Hang on just a second. Stuff getting old. Impedance sensing circuit, ISC. And what it does is it looks at the temperature, actually, the output stages. I found the patent online because there's nothing in the manual. Uh, NAD has good manuals. They have good schematics at part lists, but they have no block diagrams or theories of operation, which a comprehensive manual should have. Nevertheless, I was able to find the patent. And they said, essentially, they measure the temperature of the heat sinks to tell if, it's, if they're running them too hot. And they'll cut the voltage back. So I have to believe that there was something going on there and that that was the problem that was causing this thing to blow in the first place i'm very surprised actually shocked it'd be more like it but this thing has been working flawlessly for the last few days i'm going to play some youtube safe music here i just downloaded and it's fine and it gets loud especially in this small room I 
I should leave it on to mask the sound of my shame. <laughs> anyway, I had to share that with you folks. I was really shocked, but this unit appears to be fine now. And interestingly enough, um, I've done blanket recaps, mostly for resale purposes. I have taken capacitors out of 40-year-old Marantz receivers that test perfectly good. Nothing wrong with them. Yet this unit was manufactured sometime after 2006, which is why I believe the first models came out. And it was full of bad capacitors, mainly because of the locations and the quality of the caps that they used. So, like I said, if you come across NADs, you, this is something you're going to want to look at. I, guarantee, I can't guarantee that it's going to fix your problem, but they are probably bad. And in fact, I'm going to have to make a video on capacitors and recapping and my thoughts on this because there's one thing that I need to get through. And if that's all you take from any of my videos, take this. Recapping is not repair. If you have a problem, fix it first because you run a good chance of just introducing a new problem in addition to the one you had. So anyhow, I'm going to sign off now and post this video. I just want to let you know that this thing is working fine and I'm as shocked as you are. Anyhow, thanks a lot folks and as always I like giving back to the community that has given me so much. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.